For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show, episode 42, 42, 42. That's my son's jersey, linebacker, strong safety, and occasionally has to become number 60 and be on the line. Busy kid, love it. We're 42 weeks in and today, we're talking about being effective over the telephone. Um, I don't know about you, but in a multi-channel environment that we operate in today, phone calls, email, text, um, sending direct mail, television, radio, you know, social media, advertising, online, big stuff, smoke signals, we're doing everything today. I believe there's a lost art today in the phone. So I thought what I would do is shed a little light on my 108,000 phone calls, my first three years in sales, my 35,000 conversations to let you know there's some simple things that you can do to become more effective on the phone immediately today that will not only improve your immediate performance, it will also impact how you communicate, how you message over the phone for the rest of your career. This is very valuable information and a video you're gonna wanna watch three or four times. So let me ask you a question. If I said to you, do you have any fears of getting on the telephone? Has there ever been a time when you, oh, I don't even wanna answer that, right? Cause you don't wanna to talk to that person or you don't know who it is. Every single person I've ever dealt with in sales has said to me, I've got some fears of making prospecting calls, whether it's to my database or any newer lead source that maybe they're not as comfortable with. So I always ask the question, well, you know, why are we fearful? Like, if you've ever been afraid, why? And the number one reason you know it is fear of rejection, right? What if they say no? What if they, what if they you know, what if I call a past client they think I'm desperate for money? <laughs> you are, right? But, but here's the deal, ready? Whether it's fear of rejection, fear of failure. I've had clients say to me, I'm so busy now. What if they say yes? Oh my God, I'd have even more appointments and I'm already frazzled. This fear, this fear that's going on in our head, here's the real deal, my friends, this is how it works. You've got your unconscious mind and your conscious mind. And what we know is your mind is like this Microsoft storage file cabinet, Dropbox, right? Um, it's extraordinary. Every thought, every word, every action, true or false, has been registered in your unconscious mind. If you study the mind, you know that we, you know, by the time you were 18, from zero to 18, you were told, no, don't, stop, don't even try, you're gonna fail 180,000 times between zero and 18, and some of our parents were overachievers. They really gave it to us, plus school, plus our environment, plus our friends. The bottom line is, when I ask you to make a decision like, call five of your past clients every day, if you read my book, Life by Design, I talk about this and how all these data points in your unconscious mind filter into your conscious, which is basically the words and the actions that you take. And what we know today in human psychology is we're six moves from death and dying in every action. So I say, hey, pick up the phone and call your leads. And in your mind, you go like this. Well, if I make the phone call, what if they reject me? If they reject me, I'm not gonna feel good. If I don't feel good, I'm not gonna perform well. If I don't perform well, I'm not gonna make any sales. If I don't make any sales, I'm not gonna be able to eat. If I don't eat, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna die. And all I said is, hey, you might wanna call your past clients in sphere because people are curious about the value of your home. Brrrr, death. That's how the human mind works. I'm gonna make a statement to you. When it comes to prospecting and marketing and building your business and making any change in your life, your mind is not your friend. You with me? Your mind is designed to protect you from getting outside of your comfort zone so we remain a little drone-like, right? We all study the mind. You understand what I'm talking about. Read more psychology today and understand that your mind is not your friend. You've gotta condition your mind to do the things you want so your behaviors are aligned and you achieve your goals. So. I could give you all the cliches in the world. You've heard them all. Fear is false, evidence appearing real, right? But let's, let's just be honest. Your fear of rejection is really three things. B is we are in a fearful state. You know, to be afraid, you have to do physically, psychologically, afraid, right? So to be afraid, you've got to do afraid. To be joyful and in ecstasy, you've got to do joyful and ecstasy. To be happy and excited, you've got to do happy and excited. 
one of the groundbreaking moments of my life, 1989, Zig Ziglar, Brian Tracy, Anaheim Convention Center, both of them speaking. I was 19 years old, a year earlier I had a purple mohawk. And I watched these two guys on stage, Zig Ziglar saying, you got to have goals and y'all need a checkup from the neck up, right? And you, you gotta fake it till you make it. And I thought, oh, that's awesome. But when Brian said, let me explain, your attitude is how you view the world. And I remember right, where, how, like, where does attitude come from? Like, what does that mean? Your attitude is just how you view the world. Half empty, right, half full, fearful, love, ecstasy, joy. It's just your attitude, it's how you view the experience. And then he said to me, your attitude is determined by your self-talk, the things you say to yourself, about yourself and other people, the, the 180 gazillion conversations you have every single day up here. If you've ever been with me at a seminar before, I'll ask you to occasionally turn to your neighbor, look him right in the eye and say, your head is a scary place to be. And everybody says it, then everybody laughs because we know it's true. But what he said is we don't take control of our self-talk. The second one is your focus. Your focus is the questions you ask yourself. What do I love about telephone prospecting? What do I love about calling my past clients in sphere? What am I committed to in terms of helping 35 families buy or sell real estate this year? Ask yourself a better question that will alter your focus, which in turn alters your attitude. Your attitude will determine the actions that you take or don't take and the results that are generated and then it gets reinforced. The challenge today for many people watching this is the reason you're not on the phone at the level that you should is not because you're afraid of rejection. It's because you haven't managed to create the right state to make phone calls, to be powerful, to help more people. I know in your heart of heart you want to help. Don't let this lame-o excuse and a lack of, t of paying attention to your own state to alter your success. We need to align our behaviors. So self-talk focus and the last one is your body language, your physiology. So if you imagine while you're on the phone, the next time you're making calls, right, or before you're about to make calls, instead of, oh, I'm gonna make phone calls and is my headset ready and maybe I have to go to the bathroom and your, your, your physiology is just weak and lame, instead, stand up with your shoulders back, put your arms in the air, put a big goofy smile on your face, imagine a superwoman or superman cape behind you and then pick up the phone. Where the body goes, the mind will follow, my friends. It's that powerful. If you stand tall and you stand strong, yes, I can do this, and you say the right things and you ask yourself better questions, you will make phone calls and be powerful regardless of the prospects you're calling. So the number two reason why we're fearful, we're in a fearful state. Oh, I hope they don't answer. That's not bueno. Number three, why are we fearful? We don't know what to say. It was said to me a million years ago, knowledge equals confidence and ignorance equals fear. Let me say it to you again. Knowledge equals confidence. I know what to say. More importantly, I know what they're gonna say. I say, have you had any thoughts of selling? They're gonna say, oh, I haven't really thought about it. And then I know how to respond to that, right? Uh, are you as convinced as I am that I'm the right agent for the job to get your home sold? And if they say, we've got a friend in the business, I don't get shocked by it. I know what to say. Everybody's got a friend in the business. Matter of fact, if you didn't have a friend in real estate, I'd assume you had no friends. Press hard, lots of copies. Knowledge equals confidence and ignorance creates fear. If I don't know what to say, if I haven't taken the time to practice, if I haven't worked on my presentation skills, worked on the ability to handle objections, check out our event called Sales Edge. We should do a link for Sales Edge. Check that out. That's an event where you can go and you can work and develop your confidence so when you're talking to prospects, you know the right questions to ask in the right order to get maximum benefit and result. So we don't know what to say is why we're fearful. Because why would I want to call somebody and intentionally put myself in a situation where perhaps I could look bad, right? Nobody wants to do that. I mean, why do I put all my notes up on the wall? I want to share effectively. This is my script, if you will, like making a prospecting call. I'm doing the same exact thing I'm asking you to do. Be well prepared, know your material, know the questions you want to ask, and then deliver it. Deliver it. Now, we also know this old numbers, right? 7%, 38%, 55%. I just kind of did a little bit with you there. UCLA case study, what is communication? How do we really interpret someone's message? What we know today is only 7% of the total communication are the words that we use. The words, only 7%. So put it in context. 
if I don't know what to say and I'm making up my dialogues on the fly, I am focused on 7% and negating not only the customer listening, hello, I'm negating the customer and not listening because I'm focusing on what I'm going to say next, 7%, versus 38% is your tone and 55% is your body. So think about it like this. John walks in the room and I say, John, that's just a word. But how about if I try like this, John? I said the same exact word. The tonality completely changes the meaning. Have you had any thoughts of selling? Versus, have you had any thoughts of selling? Same exact word, 7%. What changed? The tonality. You can't focus on tonality or the way you move your body, making sure that your messaging is congruent with your customers if you're thinking about what to say. Better yet, once you take the time to practice and memorize and ingrain these habits that every successful, oh my goodness, attorneys, doctors, politicians, rock star real estate agents, lenders, all the best people around the planet know you've got to master the presentation. You've got to know your information cold so you can focus on the person you're talking to. You can listen with your eyes and with your ears, not be thinking, oh my God, what am I gonna say next? They just gave me an objection, how am I gonna handle it? You're screwed! Does that make sense? So, how do we remove the fears? Number one thing is to understand, why are we fearful? We're afraid of rejection. I get it, right? No one's gonna kill you by making a phone call. Someone might say no. I used to say to myself all the time, they just don't need my services at this time. That's okay, that means sometime in the future they will need my services. We, we have that fear of rejection. Second reason is we're in a fearful state, <sighs> right? Shoulders slumped over, frowning on your face. Not like, I am Superman or Superwoman about to make phone calls. I'm a lean, mean, appointment setting machine. Now some of you are watching me going, Fairy, you're nuts. You're right. You're right. What's the alternative? Be afraid of making phone calls? Not calling your own customer list? Not following up on with your customers? Not following up on your leads? Being afraid to help customers? Hello? Right? Fear of rejection. Fearful state. We don't know what to say, so we're focusing on the wrong thing. What to say versus the customer. But the last one is, our environment is a distraction. So, here's the deal. The people that are the most effective on the phone, the ones that get maximum results, the one that can make a few phone calls and book a listing appointment, a buyer appointment, can get the yes or find out the no and move that person off your plate, understand that I've got to have a great environment. Um, I, I used to say to people all the time, build a prospecting shrine or appointment setting shrine. So you go to Staples and you buy one of those display boards and you open it up and in the middle there's all your dialogues, right? So I, it's like a ceremony, I light a candle, oh, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the old holy appointment setting ghost, right? And I open the shrine, there's all my dialogues, I've got my laptop up, I don't have Facebook and Twitter and all the other things, I don't have the stock market, I don't have any of that stuff going, I just have my appointments in front of me, my calendar in front of me so I can make good decisions. I've got my leads. I've got maybe a little visual of my motivation and my goals over here. Maybe a my family, why I'm doing this, my emotion behind my you know actions. And then maybe I've got a photo of Cal Ripken Jr. Remember, that's like old school. Cal Ripken Jr. who played in more baseball games in a row than anybody else. That was my hero. I want to be like him. I want to you know never miss a day. I want to be Mr. Consistent. You follow me? So I've got that in front of me. Now I make my phone calls. I'm not being distracted by the environment. I'm not being distracted by anything else. I've got a great headset on that I can close off and nobody else, you know, I can't hear everything else. This is voice, you know, cancellation. So, you know, people don't hear the message. Check out theboom.com, theboom.com. These are great headsets. So your environment is a distraction. Resolve these, my friends. Focus on your self-talk. I'm a lean, mean appointment setting machine. I now command my conscious and unconscious mind to give me the skills, the talent, the ability, the humor, the knowledge, whatever it takes, whatever it takes to help these people to book more appointments starting right now, baby, right now. You say stuff like that, you focus on what do I love about being on the phone? What do I love about serving my customers? You ask yourself better questions, you get all fired up. And then the last one is you focus on the right physiology. You know when you feel good, how do you walk? How do you talk? How do you wear your shoulders? What's your facial expression look like? When you're depressed, oh, what does it look like? You can't do this and be excited. Take control of this. Master what to say. Download all the scripts from TomFerry.com and anybody else's. I really don't care. Really, I really don't. Just know what to say and stop practicing on your customers. Stop 
practicing on your customers. That's scary. And then make sure your environment's right. As I wrap it up, you probably saw this little note over here. If you haven't downloaded our business plan and you would like a total Rockstar bonus, our entire Get Organized CEO Systems Manual, I'm gonna leave this up for maybe, I don't know, a week or so. Go to tomferry.com forward slash unstoppable and you will give us your information and we will give you the business plan and the thing I sell on my website for 300 bucks, $297. Yours free because you watched the very last minute of probably a 17 minute Tom Ferry show. And for that, I'm eternally grateful. Have a wonderful day. Share this with a friend or two. Maybe send it to your manager because this could be a good sales meeting for everybody to get better over the phone. There's lots of ways to do it, but if you're good on this, you can make a lot of money and help a lot of customers buy and sell real estate. Thanks so much for watching. Talk soon. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>